everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel today we are sewing again it's been a while since i pulled out the sewing machine but we're doing it today i have um a bunch of old clothes here that i don't really wear anymore and i figured let's upcycle them into some new cute clothes that i will wear so yeah today is basically a thrift flip video but without the thrifting because they're clothes i already have so we're upcycling today Okay, so the first piece of clothing I have are these old jeans right here. I used to wear them all the time, but they actually don't really fit on the waist. I would always just use a belt, but um, I don't really wear them anymore. So I think I'm going to turn these jeans into a skirt. I don't really know what style, but we'll see. <laughs> so the first thing I did was measure where I wanted to cut off the like top part. I basically had to cut off the legs. Just be careful when you do this that you don't like cut through the front pockets because I cut through a little bit and I had to sew it up at the end. But also be careful with the back pockets because I also forgot about them and um, cut a little bit through. It wasn't that bad, like you can't really tell, but um, I seam ripped the pockets off and they left these like spaces that you can see like the dark wash spaces. So I decided to save the pockets so that I could sew them on at the end. Once I seam ripped the pockets off, I just cut off the rest. And I forgot to film this part, but I also hemmed that like top piece. That's what I'm gonna call it. That piece I just cut off is the top piece from now on. But yeah, I hemmed it. Then I had to cut the legs um, apart. I cut them into four separate pieces because I wanted two um, pieces for each ruffle. So I cut along the seams so that I wouldn't have to hem them and it would look a bit neater. And then I just measured out the bottom ruffle. I used an old skirt that you saw earlier, the like pleated green skirt as a guide to see how long I wanted. And then I forgot to film this part for some reason. I don't know why, but um, I swear I did. Anyway. <laughs> Um, I sewed two gathering stitches along the top, so I just pulled the two strings to gather it, and I did one side at a time to make it easier, and I just made sure that um, it lined up with the like circumference, I guess, of that top piece, so that when we sewed it on, it would fit nice and neatly. And then I measured to see how long I wanted the bottom ruffle, no, the top ruffle, the like smaller ruffle. Um, I made mine 6 inches and the big ruffle was 9. And then I just measured it out onto the last two leg pieces and then did the same thing. Um, I cut them out. Um, here I did film but I um, sewed the two gathering stitches um, along the top and then I pulled to gather them to match. There you can see them. I laid it on top of each other and then I sewed the two ruffle pieces together along the top. Also, sewing tip just in general, but um, always have an ex at least one extra sewing machine needle with you because fun fact, my needle broke during this and it was the last needle I had and I had to run out and get some more. Anyway, here I am measuring it up with the top part. Also, I forgot to film this part again, but I sewed the ruffle pieces together at the end so they were connected and look, it looks so neat. And then the last step was to sew on the back pockets. Actually, not the last step. There was one more. Anyway, I pinned them on the top parts that you just saw me show you and I sewed down and then I pinned it onto the top ruffle and I had to do this in two separate parts because I didn't want to sew through both of the ruffles. I don't know if that makes sense but you kind of saw what I was showing you where I just attached it to the top ruffle and I'll show you again once I finish sewing. But yeah, um, here we go. So there are pockets, pockets on, and it's only attached to the top ruffle. And then the last step, this was the last step, I had to sew up the holes from when I cut through the front pockets. I have this old button up. Um, if you watch my Halloween costumes video, then this would look familiar. 
but honestly I don't really wear it because I have a different button up that's a bit more comfortable. So I'm going to transform this shirt into a different type of shirt. And I have like a vision in my head so hopefully um, I can execute it well, we'll see. Okay, so originally I said I was going to um, flip this white button up I had, but when I was looking for fabric for the vest lining, I found this old shirt in my stash that I already like cut up. Like, I cut out the front here, as you can see, and then I like cut off half of the sleeve here. I don't really know for what, but for the shirt I wanted to make, um, all I really needed was the collar part and the buttons, so I'm actually gonna use this one that's already cut up and I guess we'll save the other one. Okay, so the first thing I did was I cut off everything except for the collar and the buttons because that was all I was using from this old shirt. And then I cut off the sleeve and separated the front from the back from the part that we just cut off that you can see. I'm really bad at explaining. I'm so sorry. I'm doing my best. But I use those pieces to make a pattern for um, the shirt because why make a pattern when you literally have one right there? Um, so I traced out the front and the back pieces. I didn't trace out the sleeves because I was waiting to do that, but spoiler alert, um, it ended up not having sleeves. Anyway, Um, because this video is thrift flipping clothes I already own, I saw this old petticoat that I made a while ago and I decided to take it apart and use the tool for the rest of the shirt because um, it's what I had lying around. Yeah, so since the tool was so sheer, I double layered the tool for the like pattern pieces. Um, I don't know if you can see, yeah, those pieces that I'm tracing out, that was double layered because it was so sheer. And at this point, the rest of the top was literally just sewing the pieces together. So that's like all the rest of the clips I have. I'm so sorry, but I tried my best to show you what I was doing, but I'll have drawings to help with my explaining. Anyway, I sewed the back and the shoulder pieces together first, and I decided to do French seams so that they would be a bit neater and like cleaner. And then I pinned the tool part onto the collar and like carefully sewed it on. Because the tool is just so sheer and thin and the collar was thick and it was already finished, I didn't bother sewing them like right sides together and flipping them inside out. Also you can't iron tool because it would like melt. Um, so I just sewed the tool right side to the collar's wrong side. I hope that makes sense. Here's a picture. I then took the extra tool and gathered it by just pushing it under the machine as I sewed. I actually hate using tool and I really only have used it to make skirts before, so this project was a little tricky with the like pattern pieces, and white tool is actually like the worst because it's so hard to see. Also tool likes to get sucked into your machine or like caught on the foot, which happened to me more than once. It's so annoying, I hate using it, but anyway, um, the one thing it's good at is gathering. That was my whole point there with that tangent. Okay, back on track. Once I had the tool like all gathered, I pinned it along the bottom and then I sewed it right sides together because I just pinned tool to tool. That makes sense. More pictures. Um, and then after I sewed them together, to clean up the edges, because I didn't do a French seam because the piece was like gathered. I didn't know how it would look. Um, I ran a zigzag stitch across the raw edge. Um, more pictures because you literally can't see what I'm doing. But it like kind of helped um, like encase the raw edges together if that makes sense. Oh here you can see. Um, look a nice clean line and not like ugly raw edges. Okay, after the ruffles were attached, I sewed the like button strip parts onto the tool the same way I sewed the collar onto it. And around this time, I realized that I used all the tool that I had from the petticoat and I couldn't add the sleeves that I wanted to. Um, so I just decided to make it sleeveless and maybe I'll add sleeves in the future, we'll see. I still think it's kind of cute, the like sleeveless look. Um, but I sewed up the sides and I zigzagged the raw edges again because I didn't realize how 
clean it made it look. It looked really nice. Oh, here you can see me struggling with zigzagging because the tool wanted to be difficult again, which was annoying. But a tip with tool or really any like slippery fabric like satin or something or like chiffon. I hate chiffon too. Um, you can sandwich your tool in between like two pieces of tissue paper, which you can see me doing. I actually just used one, but you can use two on each side and it helps. Um, it helps it go under the machine. And then I had to finish the armholes because again, I wasn't adding sleeves. And I just folded them over, um, sewed a straight stitch, and then zigzagged around them again for just an easy and clean edge. And then the very last step was to even out the ruffle at the bottom and just make it look nice, you know? I used my ruler and a rotary cutter that you can see to like make it look pretty neat. Okay, so I actually got these um, brown pants a while ago um, from the thrift store. They're way too big for me. Um, I forget what I was going to use them for, but I've had them for like forever. So I'm actually going to do something with them now. Um, and yeah. The first thing I did was I made a rough pattern of the vest and I used a tank top as kind of a guide. Um, you can see the pieces I'm making here. I just made a front and then I made a back. I only made half a back because obviously it's the same. And then I cut the back into separate pieces so that um, it would have some fancy lines, I guess. Um, that was literally the, the only reason. So technically you could make this vest with only two pattern pieces. I originally wanted more of an oversized vest but since the pants were only so big, I had to make more of a mini sized one, which is fine because it still turned out cute. And then I um, traced my pattern onto my pants. Here you can see um, the back piece right there, the like big Y back piece. I cut it out on a seam so that it would look kind of clean and neat because the biggest problem with these pants were the seams. That's why I couldn't make like huge pattern pieces like I wanted but anyway it was fine it worked out fine. and then the front pieces I actually messed up with this I think I cut it out about it but um I forgot where the seams were and how to like reposition my pattern piece to make sure it would I could get it to fit on these pants but anyway yeah those were really the only problems I had was cutting out the pattern pieces and the rest was pretty smooth sailing um, the pant fabric wasn't as thick as I wanted my vest to be, so at first I was just gonna like line it, but then I found extra green sheet that I used for my skirt, um, in my first thrift flip video. So if you watch that, this would look familiar. And if you haven't, you should watch that. It's a fun video. Anyway, I decided to make the vest reversible because I really like this green color. I think it's really pretty. Um, so yeah, basically you can make a vest and a skirt and have extra fabric out of one top sheet um, that I got for like $5. Um, and then I just cut out the same pattern pieces out of the green fabric and I sewed them together. And then I did the same thing with the brown. While we watched me sew, um, I forgot to film this part, but before I like pinned them together, I like laid out all the pattern pieces um, on top of each other. Um, like the brown with the green counterpart <laughs> if that makes sense I don't know what I'm saying but I like even them out so that they were like the exact same size just to make life easier yeah um also after I sewed the pieces together I ironed them I iron all of my stuff if I can unlike the like tool shirt I just made but I do iron all of my pieces because that's really the trick to get everything looking nice and professional just always test your iron on fabrics that you don't know 
like what type they are, especially like thrifted fabrics, and then you'll be all good. And that's the best, that's my best tip to make your clothes look clean and neat. Also, if you're trying to iron a curve, make sure you clip that curve. Okay, after I sewed and like ironed my green and brown pieces, I um, pinned them together um, and then sewed them right side. I pinned them right sides together and then I sewed them. Um, I left the like sleeve holes and then a part of the bottom open so that I could turn it inside out. And then after it was sewed together, I turned it inside out. Also, this clip is so funny because <laughs> you can see me watching the amazing race like out of the corner of my eye the whole time. Anyway, there it is. It looks so neat. And then the last step was to just top stitch everything to make it like look neat again. And basically I just put my green thread color um, on the top and then I kept the bottom color and then I kept the bottom thread color um, brown so that I could top stitch and then the colors would stay on their sides. Oh look here I'm showing you how neat and nice this looks. Oh, also when I was doing this, I made sure to close up the bottom gap and then like the sleeve holes that I left open. And then I forgot to film this part again. I'm so sorry. This is like a terrible tutorial. But um, I to attach the sleeve parts, I just zigzagged over them a couple times so that the colors would like stay the same on each side, if that makes sense. Here's a little close up video because I don't know how to explain anything. Anyway, that's the best. Um, Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed watching me um, upcycle slash thrift these clothes. If you like this video and you're interested in seeing more, go check out my other videos, especially the sewing ones. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, share, all those things. That would be so much appreciated. And I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys have a great day.